The scripture reading for today is taken from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Hi, a very good day and God bless all of you. I am Paul. Thank you for having me, right? Uh, together with my wife and I and Jubilee Ministries, we serve the Orang Asli in Kerry Island. Uh, there are five Orang Asli villages there that are uh, gazetted, and one which is still yet to be gazetted. And we spend most of our time in the ungazetted one, a small hamlet called Kampong Orang Asli Pakalele. It is there that we started uh, first with um, house sales, all right, cell groups, three families, all right, and then from there, um, we brought in the children and we started a, a preschool tuition centre, um, as well as a primary school tuition assistance on Saturdays, all right, um, and then we also now provide food packs for about twenty nine families across the island on a monthly basis. Um, we monitor medical uh, needs, all right, uh, blood pressure sugar levels and uh, provide generic medicine as well for the households, um, Panadol, flu medication, cough for, for the children and for the adults, anyone who need it. Yeah. And um, we um, also help and assist with the registration of undocumented children as well as in the case of Bakalele, we are trying to come alongside with the leaders to uh, bring about the gazettement of the village so that um, there will be no more encroachments so that the future of the uh, people who live in that uh, little hamlet, that kampong, will be preserved and they will have a heritage going forwards. The Orang Asli that are living in Kerry Island are called the Mahmari. Uh, in English, it means the people of the forest. But before they were called that, they used to call themselves the Basisi, yeah, the people of the coast. This particular tribe lives mainly among the mangroves, among the coastal plains, and they used to be in the south, in Batu Pahat, Pontian area, and they uh, in the early, early days, from two, three hundred years ago, and they expanded and they migrated right up until uh, uh, the island itself which used to be called uh, Teluk Gunjing, yeah, until uh, Valentine Carey uh, got bought it over from the Sultan of Selangor, all right? And then it was renamed Carey Island. But it used to be all mangrove forests and they, they, they lived off the forest. They were one with the land. Um, and this gives you some background about the culture that they come from. Uh, among the other villages that are actually recognized or gazetted, right, um, um, there are government representatives there, uh, official headmen um, who receive aid. Um, there is also in the village of Kampong Orang Asli Sungai Bumbun, next door to Bakalele, a museum uh, of culture for the Mahmari, yeah, and a cultural dance and a cultural center as well, you know, uh, um, that kind of thing. But Bakalele, with it's about 58. Uh, citizens or residents, all right, um, is not recognized as a gazetted village. Um, it's been six years since, almost six years since we've gone in. And uh, when we first started, uh, there was no electricity at all there. Uh, can you imagine 
the richest state in Malaysia, Selangor. Uh, and we still have villages which is not far off, not in the interior, but just off Klang that had no electrical supply. Uh, they used to work with generators, all right, uh, but that basically didn't last very long. Every six months or so, you have to overhaul your generator, all right. Um, and when we started the school and the tuition center, uh, it was just a matter of opening those plastic square tables and with benches, inviting the students over and, and the teachers, all volunteers, yeah, uh, would basically teach them the, the, the basics, the three R's, right? Uh, the reading, writing, and arithmetic in Malay because they hardly spoke any English. Uh, in fact, they hardly spoke any Malay. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, um, um, under the trees on dirt floors, all right? And uh, with that, I want to come back to basically uh, one of the first things that the Lord did for us in Kerry, uh, uh, um, uh, did basically for my education, my, to establish my relationship uh, with Him uh, in Kerry, relates back to the very, very first uh, testimony. And for that, we need to go back to the story in the Gospels about Jesus asleep on the boat um, across the stormy sea with his disciples and there were other boats as well. So uh, listen to this audio of Jesus comes the storm because uh, this is very much how we all, how I began uh, in Kerry Island. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the Lord God bless the reading of his word. Yeah. Now, um, the first week I was invited to Pakisa's home, which is made out of discarded construction plywood, uh, uh, attack roofs, no electricity, It's a small landing with which you know we met. Uh, his son, adult son, Rambi came together with his adult granddaughter Farah as well. All right, and we sat there, and this was the first story I shared with them. And when I first read it out of the Alkitab in Malay, I was quite shocked because uh, they hardly understood its meaning, you know, because uh, the language was different. And I had to retell the story uh, in uh, children's school format, more narrative, so they could actually understand better. And I asked them, please, please remember, remember this, this, this uh, passage because uh, we will discuss it again when I came when I came back the following week. And when I left, I actually was having thoughts of giving up uh, because I said, Lord, this is so difficult. I'm not sure if I am qualified to um, help them in their journey with the Lord, you know. Um, but nevertheless, one week later, uh, I was back there and Pakisa had invited his other sons from other villages who came and were reluctantly there sitting. And, and um, so after worship, I just asked, can you remember the story uh, that I shared last week? You know, uh, 
with a lot of uh, doubt, negativity in my heart, uh, you know. And then Pakisa smiles and starts talking in his own uh, native language, Bahasa Mahe. And all the children who initially very, very well, you know, reluctant to actually even come, uh, um, um, started to sit up and to listen. And then he finished the story uh, in his language. And then he smiled. And then I said, Pakisa, can you explain to me what you just uh, spoke about? And he said, you know, Paul, um, I remember, I remember the story about Jesus coming the storm. Uh, I said, because in between last week and this week, I was out at sea on my little prahu, yeah, with my wife, the late Kamun, yeah, uh, and the clouds rolled in and a thunderstorm came and, and the sea, the waves became so high, they were inundating my boat, yeah, and uh, I, I couldn't see where the shore was. You know, I've lived in these waters all of my life. Akesa is probably about 18 right now. And um, I couldn't tell which way was landward or which way was towards the sea. You know, and I had given up hope thinking this will be my last day here on earth with, with my wife. And then, and then I remembered what you said about this Jesus in the little boat as well with his disciples and what he did, you know. And because of that, I raised my hands up and I said, Lord Jesus, in your name, I command the wind and the waves to be still, peace. And then he paused and smiled and I was at the edge of my seat. And then I said, what happened? And he said, um, well, the sea calmed down, the rain stopped and it was dusk. So I could see the lights um, on the shore and I knew how to head back. And I had three little fishes, miserable fishes, all right, which about maybe 10 inches long, 25 centimeters. And uh, when I got back, the Chinese middleman, yeah, the fishmonger, uh, he was still open. I went to his house and he gave me a hundred ringgit for that fish, that three fish, which was way, way more than they were worth. So Jesus is amazing. And it was then when I could almost hear in my heart the whisper, see Paul, the Holy Spirit saying, see Paul, you are here to learn. I will teach you. And then I realized that it was my journey, you know, and from that lesson, uh, you know, each lesson when it becomes a revelation it becomes like a gift. And I used to be so worried when we started the school then that, um, oh God, it's raining on the way there. It takes an hour from my place, my house, to get to Kerry Island, uh, one way. And then you wake up in the morning on a Saturday in a thunderstorm and then you drive and, and we, we, we would normally get so worried. Oh God, how are we going to teach the children on the under the trees, on the muddy, muddy floors, you know, uh, and it's still raining when we get to Sarjana Putra on the SKVE. And uh, I'm always reminded when I get anxious of this testimony and that quietness and the Lord saying, didn't I tell you that you could ask in my name and command the wind and the waves to be still and the storm to cease. So that would become our prayer. And the thing, the beautiful part is you, as you drove closer towards Taluk Panglima Garang, and then entered Kerry Island. The, the, the thunderstorm, the, the, the lightning would cease, it would be raining. And then uh, uh, as you enter the bridge at Kerry, it becomes a drizzle. It would still be drizzling when you turn into the little dirt lane to uh, Pakesa's house where we would hold the, 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 the classes. And uh, you would stop and you would open the door and the drizzle would stop. The skies would be clear and then you go fetch the students and you'd have your lessons there, uh, a light lunch. And then in the evenings, we would have our uh, prayer service, our sermon lessons, our worship, you know, and then our uh, evening meal after that, fellowship. Um, 
much like any cell group. Yeah? And then when we pack up and leave for home at 7 in the evening on a Saturday, uh, heading back towards our home in the city, Kuala Lumpur, the rain would start again. And you could say that it's anecdotal, Paul, and, you know, it's, it's chance. But for the two and a half years when we had to do it under trees, uh, there were less than five occasions when it would actually continue to, do, to, to, to rain uh, throughout our uh, lesson sessions, you know, on that, that Saturday. All the other times, the rain would stop, you know. So, uh, personally for me, it was God's favour for Makalele and for what he wanted to be done, not our ability at all. And um, yeah, so, so the Lord continued to do many mighty, wondrous works. You know, uh, the lame are healed, the deaf hear, uh, there have been miraculous healings of broken bones, you know, uh, overnight the x-ray would show an overlapping uh, compound fracture and then the next day uh, x-rays are taken again for the child and the, 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 the fracture has actually, the, the complications, uh, the compound fracture actually has reset itself, you know, uh, um, and that would actually quicken the whole healing time. Uh, and the child in six months will be running again, playing again, football, uh, that kind of a thing. So the, the, the Lord is good all the time. Yeah. Um, um, there are many, many other stories. Yeah. And, uh, 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 but I, I like to just uh, uh, start with this one uh, because it's not just exclusive to Bakalele. I think for me, the, the, the whole reason the Lord led us to that situation was mainly to reveal that as children of the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven, we are ambassadors. And so we carry the authority and the power of the Most High. And we need to listen, to obey, and to seek and to learn. And it was here that we actually uh, began to, to listen. Um, eventually, some of the older palm trees that gave us shade had to be cut down because they were rotting. And then, uh, but by then we could build a rudimentary shed uh, uh, made, made from angle iron and uh, tarpaulin roof uh, to replace it, you know, um, and, and uh, we continued to have lessons. Over the months and years, other testimonies of the Lord's work in Kerry in different, different villages are that we have seen the Lord heal uh, people with cancer, uh, delivered people from evil spirits and addiction to alcoholism deliverance from violence, domestic violence in the family. Yeah. Um, these were for people who initially we did not know personally, but as we continued to work with the children, um, they would come to us and then they would ask for prayer and the, the, the Lord would, would, would deliver. Um, um, so his, his arm is long, the arm of the Lord is long enough, full of mercy and compassion to reach out and for most of this, they came to receive their miracle as pre-believers. Alright, and some over time would contact us and say, Lord, I, I want to become a believer now because I see and I understand. So it becomes uh, for me a living testimony uh, to, to want to know more about Jesus. The year 2020 has brought everyone yeah, the whole world into a whole deeper set of challenges, uh, uh, baffling circumstances, right? Fear, yeah, and uncertainty, all right? And it's it's the same for us in Kerry. I remember the day before uh, MCO started in March, I had to rush um, to send all the food packs in one go, and that meant two trips from KL to carry and back again to KL to take a second batch and then to deliver to carry. Uh, in my anxiety, I had to get sanitizers and then surface clean all of the food bags before delivering them. And then as I delivered the food bags, I had to brief them why we couldn't come in, to be very careful, to not trust outsiders to come in to, to the villages because from the city, 
we carry a higher risk of infecting those who are in the villages who are secluded you know and then we didn't see them again until june all right and i was so worried especially for bakalele and uh, some of the thoughts that raised through my mind were that since they were ungazetted they would be bypassed for any government aid and handouts uh, um, and, and what to do if they starve and i felt very very helpless so but i prayed i prayed and like i said the 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 hand the arm of the lord is very long yeah uh, other ngos actually came in and provided food and the uh, ironically bakalele the ungazetted unknown village received more aid than those with government aid you know so much so that when i when things reopened and i went back there again in june with food bags um, um, the people of bakalele would tell me paul we have had enough can you please go look for others so you can actually send uh, uh, some of the rice to, to others who may need it as well because some of the more uh, recognized villages didn't have enough aid all right um, uh, and ngos were not allowed to go into the, the some of the recognized villages during the mco only uh, the jabatan kemajuan orang asli was allowed to do that and it was rather difficult to arrange a coordination with them so the lot is good and, and i was wondering how do i tend to the flock i'm not there but we 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 found ways to, to, to communicate through WhatsApp, send messages, uh, two-way, you know. Um, and then uh, I also thank God for, for Rizal, our pastor there, who was trained by uh, Wesley. Yeah. And he was the local pastor there uh, in Bakalele. And he would have and handle the, uh, the Saturday sessions, go visit the other villages during the time of the MCO when I, I couldn't go in. So God is good, no matter what. Um, um, in spite of the, the demonizing of my fears, the Lord is saying, I got this settled, you know. Um, uh, we're now into another MCO, but before that happened, uh, we managed to distribute uh, hand sanitizers to the villagers. Thank you, Wesley, again, uh, gloves, uh, sorry, masks, surgical masks as well. Um, and um, my wife, Helena, uh, together with a few volunteers, took to hand sewing uh, batik cloth masks, which basically are more comfortable to wear. And we knew that the, especially the children, uh, could not afford to keep on buying surgical masks. So uh, we actually got uh, the uh, hand sewn and delivered to all the students. Uh, the, the, the cloth mask, all right, uh, with filters, all right, and uh, we actually are continuing to do so. Um, uh, so, so uh, it, it becomes, and, and we are also teaching uh, some of the mothers to actually sew this, this cloth face mask as well, uh, so that their children can actually go to school and the neighbors can also have some, yeah, um, with contributions from, from donors we have actually bought. Batik sarongs, uh, which then Helena measures and cuts up to basically sew into masks. So it, it's been a journey and, 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 you know, God is a mighty God and He is all powerful and He's all loving. Yeah. Um, um, one last thing is uh, a young father who we came to know because his wife had a heart condition. All right, uh, which got treated in uh, the cardiology center in Sedang Hospital last year. Um, I had been actually reaching out to him and he'd been interested, but he would not commit personally. And then in the absence, we lost touch during the MCO. And one fine day, he calls me up and he says, you know, uh, uh, Paul, I've had this dream. I dreamt that a demon in front of my house tried to attack me. And I do not know why when it attacked me, I said, in the name of Jesus, stop and then he said he overpowered the demon and bound it and he asked me what does it mean and i said i think you know as i prayed uh, it means that the name of jesus gives you authority to bind demons 
And then he says, you know, uh, Paul, I am ready to commit myself to Jesus right now. Uh, because I do not know how I could think of his name in a dream. Uh, and I said, well, I also wonder, you know. Uh, but it became his personal commitment. And we have a check and balance every week. He would ask me questions. Uh, and we encourage each other. Another case is of a man, a senior citizen, who had an accident on a motorbike. During the MCO, that and night, he actually fell into a ditch, fractured his neck, and then ended up three months in hospital. He had been coming to our Saturday uh, prayer sessions and sermons. Um, um, and everyone was saying, you know, he should not have gone out at night. It's so dark, it's dangerous. Uh, Family, friends, neighbors were saying that, uh, poor thing, but what to do. And he was in a lot of pain because of the fractured neck. And he later testified, he said, you know, when I was in there in pain, the doctor explained to me because it's uh, inflammation and a fractured neck, uh, uh, pain medication will not really help. And he was just crying in pain, not sure what to do uh, in ICU. And then he said, Paul, because I came and I heard that Jesus, I prayed. I prayed and then uh, the next morning I woke up and the pain was gone. And I think I know it must have been Jesus. And he also came to know the Lord and uh, through the favor that God gives us uh, to true fellow believers, pre-believers, uh, we helped to raise funds with his son's savings as well to build um, an entire uh, uh, room for him at the ground level because this is a uh, wooden steel house, you know. Uh, but we built a room with cement rendered flooring, uh, with a hospital type bed, um, ripple mattress, and medication. Uh, so, so God is good, and then He said, Paul, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Um, and uh, uh, we, we started lessons with him and he asked to have uh, um, Holy Communion. Yeah, and then as we explained, we actually also partook of the bread and, and the cup together with him. So, in spite of the circumstances, the darkness that surrounds us, uh, we, the light given by Jesus, shines through us even brighter. And this is the best time to, to actually reach out to be with people, you know, in spite of our doubts, you know. We, we go back to the story of Jesus comes to a storm. The storm became bigger to the disciples than who Jesus was. And maybe they felt that Jesus was asleep, not interested. But the fact is that Jesus, to me, trusted the Father who never sleeps to take care of all his sheep as well, you know. Um, and of course, I always feel that rebuke when Jesus said, have you so little faith uh, when he rebukes the disciples? Uh, but the thing is, is in spite of the rebuke that I receive, that I can still hope. It's because I have no faith. I can still cry out to the Lord, 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 are you not concerned that we die, that we perish? And he will rise up. Firstly, say to the storm that we are in, Peace, be still. So right now, I think in Jesus' name, we say to this COVID storm, to this political situation that we have, to the water crisis that we seem to have in Slango, to these circumstances, in Jesus' name, peace, be still. Yeah, just like Pak Kesa actually taught me, <laughs> I taught him uh, six years ago almost now. Yeah, so this, this is why uh, we have the hope in Christ Jesus. So, in the ensuing months and years we've been at Kerry, uh, many volunteers have come alongside, yeah, including uh, Wesley Plank Methodist as well, you know, and we are so, so grateful for the partnership, for the expertise, for the love, yeah, that has been uh, shared as well. And we know that as God opens doors, um, and that we walk together with him, he will bring to fruition what we have started, no matter what the circumstances, no matter how difficult we seem, how impossible 
we, we see it is today. He is the beginning and the end. He knows our end aim and he will finish what he started. We just come alongside. Yeah. And uh, this is my encouragement. All right. Uh, that we can continue to grow in faith, in hope, and in charity. I prefer to use the word agape rather than charity um, or compassion. You know, uh, we continue to do good, to love justice, uh, to love our neighbors as ourselves because it is the commandment Jesus gave to us. And uh, we cannot say that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, uh, if we do not practice uh, loving our neighbors as ourselves. So um, some of us are not able to reach out into distant places, yeah, because of restrictions, because of uh, circumstances like the MCO, right? But we can just look around uh, our neighbors uh, next door our own family members, you know, our own uh, brothers and sisters. Yeah, if we have been distant in the past, we can reconnect, we can share, uh, and then we can also, um, out of acts of kindness, yeah, demonstrate what it is like to be an ambassador, right? Uh, as the, the light on the hill, yeah, the light of the city on the hill, yeah, cannot be hidden. Uh, let us be the light of the world as Jesus has been the light of the world and gives us yeah, that inheritance. We can actually continue to do that. How we do that, that's part of the journey. Sometimes we don't see all ends. Yeah, uh, Only He knows. Yeah, So that is the encouragement that I would like to give to you all. God bless. Yeah, And don't forget also, if you have a need just as you're ready to bless others be ready to also be blessed all right to receive yeah do not be afraid to speak to one another to have a dialogue same as do not be afraid to have a dialogue with the father um, uh, and that means to also stop and listen sometimes after our prayers for the answer from god and to stop and listen to one another to see what their needs are and sometimes that massive disagreement we may have with someone uh, uh, becomes smaller, becomes resolved because earlier we could not see their perspective and when we start to listen, we begin to see and then we know how to reach out more. God bless you. See you again. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us.